Greetings everyone, welcome back to another of Lamex Effects. Last episode, Titus met Waka and the Besaid Aurax, and now that we have met Waka, we can discuss a few new aspects of how he was affected by the curses in Deuteronomy. And, like before, we will find out how the curses were hidden by symbolism so the average person wouldn't notice it. But first, like this video and share with others you think might be interested in seeing how Square Enix used biblical scriptures to write their game Final Fantasy X. And comment what you think about my explanation. Now, let's begin. So, after Titus meets Waka, the two swim around and do some great use of show and don't tell, actually. Basically, these two fight very well underwater, which makes sense because they're both Blitzball players. I think one of the Aurochs even says a great player can fall asleep underwater without drowning. Something Titus literally did when he got knocked off the ship by Sin and was knocked out in the ocean. Okay, after that, story moment. <laughs> ah. Let me go! Got a favor to ask you. You want me on your team, right? Hmm? Major Blitz tournaments coming up. All the teams in Spira will be there. It's so huge, I'm sure someone there will recognize you. Then you can go back to your old team, right? It'll be fun. What do you say, huh? Come on, come on! Sure thing. Dude. Our team is gonna rock, eh? So, yes, Waka asked Titus to join his team temporarily as they go to a game. Like, this will explain why they're traveling together later. Something that I think is going to be important. But, here's where the curses we were talking about are shown. This is where I was born. I started Blitz when I was five. I joined the Aurochs at 13, 10 years ago. 10 years, and we never won a game. Well, after last year's tournament, I quit. Time seemed right. So, after quitting, I got this new job, yeah? But every time my mind wandered, I thought about the game. 10 years without a single win will do that. Mm. My first match last year was my big chance. But something else was on my mind. I couldn't focus. Nice excuse. Hey, hey! Now, you saw that Waka lost every game for 10 years. The fact that it will be 10 years is important. Actually, after watching it, everything is important. But I want to focus on Waka losing to every game and his attitude towards winning. We'll get Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 29. It says, And thou shalt grope at noonday, as a blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. So, this verse talks about how Israel will never succeed in anything. And Waka, for 10 years, since he was a little child, doesn't remember winning. He has never prospered. Just like the verse says, Walker has known only failure for so long that he can't even imagine victory. In order to numb the pain of loss, he subjected himself to just hoping to do his best. So you want to win the next tournament? Go out with a bang. So what's our goal? I don't care how we do, as long as we play our best. If we give it our all, I can walk away happy. And what's worse is that when Titus tells him to seek victory, Walker is still surprised by the very idea. This is what the scripture means by thou shalt be only oppressed and spilled evermore. It means there will be no hope in your soul for any victory. Now this part about story writing is excellent. It's wonderful because it makes Waka relatable. When you want your readers or gamers to be invested in the story, you want them to relate to the people that they're reading about or playing as. 
Everyone knows how it feels to lose, so everyone can imagine how Waka must feel for losing for so long. However, remember, this game is about hiding messages. To explain, let's examine the sports arena since Waka is a blitzball player. In sports, how are teams divided? They are divided by location. And for Olympic sports specifically, these locations are countries or nations. It's I am from this nation, like Japan, and you are from that nation, like America, therefore we fight. Now, the definition of nation is race. So sports teams are symbolic of different races of people fighting each other. Let's go back to that verse from Deuteronomy 28 verse 29 again. It says, And thou shalt grope at noonday as a blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Now the word oppress means to keep someone in subservience and hardship, especially by unjust exercise of authority. So walk is lost isn't about sports, it's not a sports issue, even though it seems like it. It's a racial issue. This verse is saying that Israel will face racism in a way that keeps them from succeeding in anything. Now this thing that I'm explaining to you, this is called a parable. A parable is an illustration to show what one is talking about by speaking about something else, basically symbolism. Like in Matthew chapter 13 verse 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Because if writers outright spoke about racism, not everyone's going to listen. Some are oppressed and they don't want to feel like victims or they don't want to think about their oppression. Others are oppressors but don't want to feel like the bad guys. So everyone has their guard up and even if you're right about what you're talking about, they will argue with you as if you're wrong because no one wants to talk about it. But when you're talking about sports, everyone gets sports. It's normal to think of the other team as the enemy. Everyone understands you need to try your best in order to win. Everyone understands the pain of losing and no one thinks you're wrong for wanting to win. So I can talk about sports and illustrate the same point and no one would understand where I got the idea from. So Waka losing in sports illustrates a race of people that, no matter how hard they try, will never win at anything, and no world war would save them. They've been beaten so much that the other definition of oppressed comes up. That definition is depressed or dispirit. So they don't even believe they can win. So every team in the sports is not a game team. They represent races in the world. And Walker's race has been beaten for so long that they don't even care about winning anymore. As long as they can play with others and feel equal, sharing the same sphere as them, they feel like they're happy. And here's what Tyus has to say to that entire thought. Uh, no, 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 no. If I say, what's our goal? You say, victory. When you play in a Blitzball tournament, you play to win. Basically, Titus says, Every race comes onto this planet debating about who's the best. Some say, we have the best technology. Others, we have the best weapons. Others, we have the best history. Some races say, we produce the most businesses. Other races say, we produce the most doctors, lawyers, and engineers. And some say, our race has the most global control over all the other races. And others even say, we have the best submission to God and culture, so we're the best. So when you look at the game arena, you look and you see it's not a field, it's a sphere. That's a globe, it's an entire world. Every race who enters that world fights to prove that they're the best. So when you come into that world, your goal isn't to be equal and play with everyone else. Your goal is to win. Nope, we got a new goal now. Our new goal is victory to win every match, defeat every opposing team, to bring the Crystal Cup back to our island. That's all we need to do to win. Easy, huh? So this message is say, when you are born, you're born to win. And when you come with that loser's mentality of just trying to be equal, you won't get what you want anyway. Like for example, Walker says he just wants to do his best, but you can't do your best if you don't feel like you're gonna win because you're not fighting your hardest. 
If you don't fight your hardest, you can't win. And if you don't think you're gonna win, you're not gonna fight your hardest. And also when you're in a race, let's say you're in a race, you're always starting from behind, trying to be equal to someone's faster than you. You try to run at 25 miles an hour because the last guy clocked at 25, then he tries to run at 27, you lose. Then you say, okay, if I wanna be equal, I need to be faster so that I can catch up with him if he overtakes me. Well, then you're not being equal anyway because now you're trying to be better, but you slow yourself down to try to be like everybody else so that he can pass you again and you lose. So the point is fight, fight to win. Now, I've spoken a lot about the curse of sin in Deuteronomy 28, this time about 29, but this game is not just about the curses. It's about defeating sin and breaking those curses. So we're here to tell these people they can win. And I've spoken, told you that the curses of Deuteronomy are in 28 verses 15 through 68, right? But what's in verse one? Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse one says, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. When you play in a Blitzball tournament, you play to win. To win every match, defeat every opposing team. And you know what? Waka hears something like that, and his expression expresses someone who's downtrodden. Victory? You're serious? Now, I feel obligated to get one of the things that Waka has done because I made a promise that I would get what Waka's sin was in this episode, right? But the truth is, he actually committed three sins. But since we're on a topic, I'm going to show you one. It is Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Basically, the commandment is, no matter what hardships you go through, don't get depressed and don't give up. Keep fighting, keep trying. Believe you can win. But since he broke this commandment, which is a sin, he suffered the curse of failure from Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 29. Because what no one says is the curses are directly correlated with the commandments. If you break a commandment, you get the curse that goes with it. Just as I said before, because he doesn't believe he can win, he doesn't try his hardest, so he doesn't win. The truth is, even though I spoke about sports and saying it's an allegory about races and races fighting other people, it is also symbolic showing that your lack of faith is what causes your own downfall. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So, one of the things Waka did was letting his faith falter. The second thing he did is our main topic next time on the Mex effects.